All right, welcome back. Today we're going to start on an entirely new topic. We're going to talk about integrity and what, what integrity is. Right, you remember that when we first started talking about uh, computer security, we said there, there were three big topics in security. There's confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We spent a lot of time talking about confidentiality and models of confidentiality like Bell and Padula and non-interference. Today we want to talk about how you might uh, develop a, a similar modeling framework for integrity. Okay, and we also said when, as we began that integrity was a somewhat fuzzier notion than confidentiality. It's pretty clear for confidentiality, you don't want information to, to, to leak in certain ways. But what about integrity? Well, integrity is about who can modify or supply data. It's about how you separate and protect assets as we, as we did with confidentiality. How do you detect and or correct erroneous or malicious uh, changes to data? And can authorizations change over time? One of the things that I'd like to point out to you, uh, these, these uh, questions sound similar to the ones we ask about confidentiality, but there's a, there's a sort of fundamental difference between confidentiality and integrity. And that is the following. If you have a, a breach of confidentiality, that means information is flowing where it shouldn't typically outside the system or, or to a domain inside the system that's not supposed to have a, uh, information reach it. Well, so you really need two parties to participate in a confidentiality breach. But with integrity, you could have a malicious or uh, sloppy program that, say, overwrites all your files. And there isn't any sense in which information is going outside the system. And so you, unlike confidentiality, you don't need a collaborator to receive the information. You can just do bad things from the perspective of integrity entirely within the system. Okay, so what is integrity? Well, let's, let's look at, at it sort of intuitively. Suppose that you're standing in a line at the supermarket buying your groceries and you look over on the newsstand and you see the following headline. <coughs> Excuse me. Hillary Clinton to have aliens baby. All right. So, what do, you what do you make of this headline? Well, I I'd like to suggest to you that the amount of credence you put in that headline may depend upon how much uh, trustworthiness you put in the newspaper on which the headline appears. So, for example, if you look over and you say, you know, wow, that's on the Wall Street Journal, for example, you might say, well, you know, the Wall Street Journal, that's a pretty conservative uh, newspaper and Hillary's pretty liberal and so maybe they're making up something about her. So there's, a, there's some political skullduggery going on there. If, if it's on the New York Times and you happen to believe the New York Times is a pretty reliable source, you might say, well, uh, I need to read this more carefully and see what's going on here. Or you might check your calendar and make sure it's not April 1st. But if it's on the National Enquirer, you might say, uh, they're up to the same old stuff, right? So what's the difference in the three cases? Well, you've got the same piece of data, but I claim that it's the integrity of the source which is at issue in these three cases. Right, that's what's different. And so what we would like to do is find a way to associate with subjects and objects integrity labels, just as we did confidentiality labels in Bell and Lepadula. Uh, and as with Bell and Lepadula, the semantics of a label on a subject and an object vary slightly. So for an object, the uh, label indicates the trustworthiness of the information contained in the object. And for a subject, it measures our confidence in that subject to produce and modify data. Okay, so that's intuitively what integrity is about. And so in commercial settings, integrity has some different kinds of concerns than typically arise in the setting of a confidentiality policy or, for example, a military policy. So, for example, uh, separation of duty is an integrity concern. What does separation of duty mean? It means that several different subjects have to be involved in the completion of one uh, critical task. So, for example, think about the following. You go to a bank and you ask them to make out a check for you, uh, a cashier's check for $10,000. It may be that they, their policies require that they have the signatures of two bank officers on that check before you can walk out the door with it or before it's valid. 
Why do they do that? It's so one bank officer colluding with you can't you know, steal $10,000 from the bank. It requires at least two, two entities, and that's a, that's a security backup system. Okay, so how about separation of function? Well, that's slightly different because it requires uh, that one individual can't perform two different critical functions. So for example, back in, the, back in the bank, suppose that you work as a teller during the day, perhaps you're not also allowed to be an auditor at night. And why do they do that? Well, because if you steal money during the day, you can cover it up at night in your different persona as an auditor. And that's, that's bad. And so they, but if you have different people operating in those two functions, then at least you have a little bit of checks and balances. And finally, auditing, well, that's just uh, keeping careful records so that if something bad does happen, you can go back and assign responsibility and perhaps uh, you know, roll back or, or take care of you know, the, whatever the problem was. Okay, so these kind of integrity concerns are often extremely important in commercial settings whereas they may not be so important in, for example, a military setting. So uh, Steve Lipner, who's now at Microsoft, uh, thought about this problem and came up with, for example, a set of integrity concerns which might apply, say, in a bank once again, where you have tellers on the floor and they're using software to keep their drawer balanced, but you don't want those same tellers to be the ones that write that software. So you have uh, a production side of the house and you also have a development side of the house where the the coding goes on. So for example, some integrity concerns that you might have in that kind of environment are users, that is tellers, should not be writing their own programs. Those are done on the production side of the house. And the programmers over in the uh, development side, excuse me, of the house, um, well, there's, they're, not, they're not operating on real customers' data. They're operating possibly on contrived data. And then when they finish a program, and they want to move it out uh, for the use of the tellers, there has to be a mechanism by which, by which that occurs that has to be controlled in some way. So those are the kind of concerns which you might uh, think of in, in a standard commercial environment. And notice that some of those concerns are particular to a specific commercial environment as opposed to general concerns which would apply to any commercial environment. All right. So what have, we, what have we learned in this lecture? Well, integrity, unlike confidentiality, uh, really relates to how an entity can produce or protect or modify data, as opposed to confidentiality where you're worried about who can see data. Uh, unlike confidentiality, violations of integrity don't, out, don't require an outside party to get the information. You can screw things up bad enough just by yourself. And in many applications, particularly in the commercial world, integrity is more important by far than confidentiality. Thank you.